everybody, it's Amanda Wessler from iRacePass. Uh, I wanted to make a video showing you as a driver how it looks or what you're going to encounter when you first sign up for MyRacePass and or register for an event in that process. A lot of times I know a driver is not going to go onto MyRacePass and make an account um, until they're ready to register for an event through MyRacePass which makes sense to me. So more than likely as a driver, you're gonna to go to one or two places to find the actual registration for the event that you would like to attend. Um, first of all, which is the, probably the most common place for you to go, is gonna to be to your tracks website. Now, this is my test track, so I'm gonna to go to my test tracks website, it's called Your Favorite Track, um, and I'm gonna find my driver registration here. So there's a couple places where you're probably gonna see registrations um, located. So the first option probably is gonna be, or not probably, could be up here in the taskbar where all these other words are. There might be one that says registration. Uh, the other place you might see it is you might see underneath a drop down menu. So it could, might be under driver info. There might be one of these that says uh, registration or online registration or driver registration or something to that effect. Um, the third place and probably the most common place is you're going to see it as a button somewhere on the home page of your tracks website if they have an MRP website, if they have a MyRacePass website. If they don't have a MyRacePass website, that's another story and we'll talk about how you really get to those. Um, but more than likely on a MyRacePass website, you are going to find driver registration underneath some kind of button. Um, on the home page. Ours happens to be over here on the right hand side. Sometimes you'll see them up here at the top where it might say driver dashboard or registration or something to that effect up here. Um, so to get to the registrations that are available for that track or for your track, you'll click on that driver registration button and it will open a new window to where all of the active registrations are for your racetrack. Um, and that's where you're going to find it for the event that you would like to attend. The other way you are going to find it, if your track does not have a My Race Pass uh, website, you're going to have to go to MyRacePass.com, and I'll do that here on this page, MyRacePass.com. And once you get to this website, this is the home page of My Race Pass, you're going to have to search up here in the top left for the name of your track. So again, my track that I'm going to race at is your favorite track. Uh, make sure you click on the proper one and it's going to take you to their My Race Pass profile. Underneath My Race Pass profile at the top in this top bar up here you will see the word registration. You're going to click on that registration header and it will take you to the exact same page that you had got to from that registration button on the home page of the My Race Pass website. So again, the, this way through My Race Pass, you're going to need to use if your racetrack does not have a My Race Pass website. If they do, there should be a registration button somewhere on the home page or underneath driver information um, or up here on the taskbar at the top. So once you get to the website where all of the active registrations are for that website or for that track, you're going to need to find the proper registration. A lot of times, once a re if it's a event registration. Once that event happens, that registration will disappear because it is no longer active. But sometimes you might see that a track has what they call a yearly registration. Potentially that's for points uh, registration or point sign up or something of that nature or a banquet registration um, or something else. I would recommend that a track uses it for point sign up so you might have that. You have to sign up through points using that method. But if you're looking for an event registration, we try to tell tracks to label them properly so they're very unique and so people can find them easily. My recommendation is that they use a date in the front to tell you which date the registration is for. So that would be like this one down here at the bottom. I put the date of the event and then the title of the event. So points racer driver registration. It could be something different. But typically I would recommend that they, or you should see something where it says driver registration of some nature. Make sure that they are offering the class that you're hoping to run. Obviously you can see they're super pro, three junior classes, sportsman and pro. Uh, this is similar to my home track. Obviously we call them top ET and modified and juniors um, in a different manner. But your track should have the names of the classes as you would expect to see them. So whether it's top ET or um, uh, Super Pro, 
depending on your sanctioning body, it should say the proper name uh, for that class down there. So once you find the registration you are hoping to find, you're going to click register and it's going to take you to this login screen because you've never logged into my race pass before. So it's asking you to log in. So in this box, I'm going to type in the email address that I would like to log in with. Um, and give me one second. Amanda dot Bustler. Sorry, I like to talk out loud. That's my fault. Um, so there's the email address I'd like to use. So I'm going to push continue and it's going to say, whoa, you don't have an account yet. So here it brings you to the create account page. And on this page, you are going to fill in all this information so that it can create an account for you. So again, I'm going to confirm that email address in that first box. Okay. The first name. Now I'm actually going to create this account account for my uh, fake driver because I am obviously not registering somebody who's real, quote unquote. This is just a demonstration so that you can see what it looks like. So I'm going to register somebody named Susie Baloney. And then I will give her a password. And then she is going to be a driver. Now there's other options in here, promoter, that would be like a racetrack, business owner, crew member, fan, scorer, announcer, but you wanna be a driver because that's how you're gonna be allowed to sign up as a driver. And then her zip code, 47682. And then I'm gonna push create account. Now it says an email was sent. An email was sent. And so now you need to go to your email and find the email that was sent to you from my race pass so you can see what it says. So when you go to your email, you'll see at the top um, or in your inbox, it's going to have this title, my race pass. Please verify your account. They, the reason you need to verify your account is so it will create your account. So down here, it's asking you to process the request by verifying now. So I'm going to click on that button. I apologize, it opened over here on this other one. And it actually took me right to the registration that I was trying to sign up for. So I verified my account and it brought me to that registration that I was trying to fill out before. So again, I can verify that by the title of the registration. Um, and then you can see that you've got a couple options. Select class. So here's where you need to select what class you are going to be running. Please make sure this is accurate because this is the class that it's gonna say that you're running. So um, the reason that these first two don't have prices on them is just because I took them out so I could do the demonstration, but the prices will show up over here on the right hand side of these boxes. Again, no two classes need to have the same price. So whatever your entry fee is, is what that price is going to be. Okay. Um, so at this point, you can see that the junior classes are 35, sportsman is 40 and pro or modified is 50. This is roughly what my home track does. So that's kind of why I use these prices because this is familiar to me. Um, Super Pro or Top ET is usually 50. Uh, the other junior class would be 35 as well. So I'm going to say that Susie Baloney is going to be a Super Pro driver. Um, you pick, again, the appropriate class for what you're going to be running. Again, if your, your track has different names or different classes, whatever it is, whatever those classes are that are available that day will show up here. If there's a test in tune, there will be an option to pick a test in tune. If there's whatever, there'll be an option for that. However many classes that that class is, or that track is running that day will show up right here where it says select class. So I select the proper class and because I've never registered Susie Baloney before, we don't have a name under the select competitor spot. I will show you what it looks like once she has been created in the My Race Pass system, what that looks like for the next time Susie Baloney registers for an event. So at this point, I have to click new competitor. Again, we're going to register a new competitor that's not listed above. Yeah, there's nobody listed above, so we're gonna do that. And we're gonna push continue. Now you're gonna get to this next page. This is where you're gonna fill in all the important information. Think about this similar to your tech card that you currently fill out. You're gonna put all the important information on there, your name, your address, um, your birth date, those kind of things, so they can verify how, how old you are, particularly for the juniors. Um, as well as some of your car information, maybe what your occupation is because that's important for an announcer to have or your car information because again, 
it's nice for the announcer to have to talk about you to to hype you up to make to show how important you are as a racer you want to be able to tell some people about your stuff so that's the kind of information we're going to fill out here again be sure that this information is correct do not use a parent or team owner's information here you have to put your competitor's first name and last name um so at this point you need to put in Susie Baloney because she's the one that's actually going to drive the car. So because Susie's driving the car, we're going to put Susie Baloney. And I have to put Susie's address, 12679 Stevie Street. Again, this is completely fictional, obviously, because I do not know anybody named this. She lives in somewhere. Um, and in the country box, you've got a couple different options or different ways to get to United States, but obviously United States is at the top. These other countries are in here because we've had racers come from these countries who raced at one of the tracks that uses my race pass, or they have they use my race pass in some of the countries that are listed there. So I'm going to pick United States, and then Susie lives in my somewhere Indiana, and her zip code four seven six eight two. Again, we used that earlier. Uh, the email address, I'm going to use the same email address because I want everything to come to one place. It makes, makes things easier. Plus, why would you sign up for one using one email and then have it sent to a different email? That'd be kind of strange. Um, phone number, we're going to use uh, Stevie's mom's phone number. 555-471-5455. And we're going to give C Susie a birthday of... 2015. Oops. Take that back. Maybe not. Yeah, we can't have her in 2015. She wouldn't be old enough to drive a sport or super pro car. Um, let's go with 2009. Okay. So that's Susie's birthday. And now we're going to talk about what her, or now we're going to choose what her gender is. Yes, this is required. Um, no, there's no consequence for choosing one. It doesn't do anything. It's just a, something that we I like to know. So competitor miscellaneous information. Again, this is information that's important or nice for the announcer to have so they know what they're talking about. So underneath occupation, you can put that Susie's a student um, because she's still in college. She doesn't have another job. Whatever your job is, again, it's kind of nice to put it in there so that the announcer has something to talk about. This is not required. This is optional. Um, t-shirt size. The reason t-shirt size is here, again, it's optional, but it's nice to, for the track to have at some point during the season because if you make it to the bracket finals or the world finals or whatever it might be, it's nice for them to know what size t-shirt that you might need so that they can order that for you and not have to ask you again toward the end of the season, like, hey, what's your t-shirt size? Or go to the souvenir booth and tell them what your t-shirt size is. If you put it on here one time, they've got it. So Susie is an adult medium. Um, and then the next spot, owner information. So if you have somebody else who's gonna get the checks for your driver. So Susie is still considered a student. She's underage, quote unquote. Well, she's not underage, but she's still considered a student. So maybe her mom wants to uh, be the recipient of it. Or maybe they have a business that they would, they have like a, a racing business that they want the check to be written to. You're going to put that information in here. So if you check this yes box, I need to add my team owner. Again, this is where you would probably put like your race team or whomever it is that owns your car that's going to receive the check. Or if there's just an owner who owns your car, um, but then you receive your check. It's nice for them to put that information in there. Again, um, could be stuff that the announcer may see. So if you have a race business, it's kind of hard in here because there's a first name, last name. Eventually this will become one field where it's just like, what's your business name or what's your owner name? Um, but for now, I'm going to put it on two separate lines. B-O-L-O-G-N-A. Um, Baloney Racing is what their team, what their uh, owner name is or their team name. So that's what I'm going to put in there. And then their address is the same as Susie's address because, you know, um, and then she lives in somewhere, Indiana, again, United States first, and then that allows you to pick the state that you're in. And then zip code or seven, six, eight, two. Again, repeat on the email. You could copy and paste it from above if you would like, but 
sometimes it's almost more work to copy and paste it. So it's up to you which one you'd like to do. And then a phone number. Again, we're going to use Susie's mom's phone number, 555-471-5455. And then this right here is super important, the payout recipient. If the track chooses to use my race pass to print their checks at the end of the night, if you are the winner, the runner up, whatever, if you're getting money from the racetrack in the form of a check, you'll want to make sure that this is appropriate because whatever it says here is who they're gonna write the check to or who my race pass is gonna print the check to if they choose to use my race pass. So driver or owner, I'm gonna say the owner is going to get it. Um, and then down here is your class information. Now, there are a few of these that are required because I want the, or the tracks want them to be required. There's a few, there's one of these that is not required. So obviously car name is required, or sorry, car number is required because if I don't have your car number, I don't know who you are because that's what our timing systems are all based on. What is your car number? So Susie's is 156X. Her car make and model, she drives a junior dragster. It's a half scale. Uh, junior dragster. I'm just going to put half scale and Blossom is who makes her engine. So I'm going to put Blossom in there. And then under sponsors, these three boxes right here, car number, car make and model and engine make and model are required. Uh, again, it's important to have because the announcers like that information so they can talk about you as a driver. Sponsors is, is optional. If you have sponsors, obviously I recommend you put them there because more than likely the announcers are going to announce your sponsors. Um, but you don't have to if you don't want to. So we're gonna leave sponsors blank because Susie doesn't have any besides her parents. Of course, you could get cute and write mom and dad in there as your sponsors. Um, and the last thing is your emergency contact. So that would be Susie's mom and her name's Brenda Baloney. And her number is 555-471-5455. And then if there are any allergies or notes about the driver that you would like them to know, you will put that in this box. Um, it's a really up to you what you put in there. And then that would be like filling out your quote unquote tech card. Now, obviously you saw there's no tech piece to this, but that doesn't mean you don't get to skip tech either. You have still have to go to tech and do what you're supposed to do at tech. Okay, so this is just for signing up for the race itself. So once you've got all that information in there, you're gonna push continue and it's gonna ask me if I wanna save that. No, I do not. So here's where you get to what's called a, com, a confirm registration screen. This is just going to be a good confirmation uh, to look through and make sure all of the information that you just put in was accurate. And if it wasn't, you can go back and fix it and, and change it before you actually pay for or confirm that your registration is correct. So here's your confirmation screen. So look through and make sure all the information is correct. What class you're running, what car number you put in, that's super, super important. Driver name is super important. Again, we wanna make sure that stuff is accurate. And then here's the owner's information. If you had any payout, who's it gonna pay out? Double check that. Is it going to get paid to the right person, the owner or the driver, who's getting paid? Like who is the check actually being written to? Um, and so then you're gonna go down here, Brenda Baloney is the emergency contact. Once you verified that everything is correct on here, you have two options depending on where you are at. Like, what are you doing? If you need to add another registration, like let's say you are running two classes, you're running super pro and pro. You're running both of them. You can go back and add another registration for a different class. You can also go back if you have two drivers racing the same class. Let's say like my dad and I typically run the same class. So I could go back and add another registration for Super Pro as long as Susie isn't the driver. So you can add another right here. It will take you back to that registration screen um, to all of the current registrations because you could also register for a completely different event. So for example, um, I could register Susie for uh, this test date. Maybe she's gonna run Junior Dragsters this time. So I could register for this event as well on the same cart as I did the other registration. You can sign up for more than one registration at a time. Or you can, like I said, you can sign up a completely different driver um, on the same cart. You can also sign up the exact same driver for a different class on the same cart. 
whatever it might, you might need to do to have that multiple registrations in the same car, you can do that as long as it's not the same driver in the same class. Once you have all of your registrations in your cart and you've checked them over, you're ready to go. You're going to click that you confirm that you uh, have all your information is correct again because you looked it over and you agree to the terms and conditions. Once you've done that and you have all of your registrations in your cart, or sorry, on this screen, you're going to push add to cart. At that point, it will show you all of them broken down with a little synopsis description of what you've got in your cart. Your driver name, what registration you registered for, what class you are running. All of those information, all of this information is there and how much your registration is. Again, in this case, it is zero just because it's a demonstration, but this would be like what your entry fee is. This would be the price of your entry fee. If I clicked on Susie's name, it would bring up her confirm registration again and you would have to go through again and confirm, agree, and add to your card. Okay, so you're at this checkout screen, double check everything is correct, and this is what your total would be. If it was not zero, you would see uh, some service fees and some processing fees. Um, it's a $1.90 processing fee for my race pass to process your registration. You also would have your credit card service fees on top of that as well. So once you've got that, you're gonna push checkout. And it's gonna take me to this edit billing slash shipping because I have never had a MyRacePass account, so it doesn't have any billing or shipping information in here for me. So I'm gonna put in Susie's mom's because she is the um, adult in this situation. So I'm gonna put in Brenda and Baloney. Oh, mouse in the wrong plot. And then their street address is 12679 Stevie Street in somewhere Indiana. Country again, United States. If you just type U, it will pop up United States. Again, same thing with the state. If you type I, it will pop up the first I state. So then IN would bring up Indiana. And zip code 47682. And then their phone number, so 555-471-5455. And at the bottom it says use as a shipping address as well. If you have a different shipping address, you can uncheck that and it will give you a spot to enter a different shipping address if you need that. Otherwise, I would leave that box checked so you don't have to type everything twice. And I'm gonna save and continue. No, I don't wanna save that. And so again, before you actually pay for anything, right here is the price per unit, right? Before you actually pay for anything, you're going to double check that your billing and your shipping address are correct. And again, that you have all the proper registrations in your cart. And you're going to push I agree to the terms and conditions and you're going to complete your order. Once you complete your order, you will get this nice, lovely thank you screen or this registration screen that shows you that your order is complete. Um, and again, it gives you a description of what you did. You've got what, what registrations you had, how you paid for them. Um, and then you get a breakdown of the registration that you filled out so that, again, you know what you put in here. If you see a problem with your registration, you can contact um, somebody at a My Race Pass or at the track that you're at. Um, it'll tell you to call or call your the track that you're going to go to, and they can help fix that problem. Notice up here on the top right for registrations, it said registration information has been has been sent to the promoter. Review all submission reg registration information below. And it says we've also emailed a confirmation to, and it gives the email address that you entered. And it does in fact send you a confirmation email in your inbox. Last thing on this page is on the bottom right, it says start another registration. You can click that and start a completely new registration. Like if you had to pay with a different card, if you were registering somebody else who wanted to pay with a different card, whatever it might be, you would be able to do that using this button right here on the bottom right. So that's how you register for an event from scratch, okay? That'll be your first time into My Race Pass. Once you're into My Race Pass as a driver, your track will go in and confirm that you are in fact a driver at their facility, which creates an account on my, or sorry, creates a profile on My Race Pass. Once your profile is created, the cool part is, is the next time you go to register for an event, 
it will be much faster and easier for you to register. So I will show you that in just a minute. I just have to go confirm that Susie is in fact a driver that is going to race at my track. And once that is created, I will show you a few things about your profile as well as how, you, how it looks to register for event number two um, on your season. So again, once you have um, registered for an event, the track will go in and confirm you as a driver for that event, which will create a My Race Pass profile for you the very first time that you've ever created a race track, or sorry, every, the very first time you've registered for an event through My Race Pass. So once you've done that, you will receive several emails telling you that your registration has been confirmed, but also, more importantly, you're gonna get this email that says, claim profile complete. So when the race tracker put you in, when the racetrack put you in as a confirmed driver, it claimed you as a driver on my race pass, giving you a profile. So if I click on, um, there's a couple different things. This is we automatically claimed your profile, get started by updating your profile information. Be sure to add photos to get the most recognition. So if I say update your profile now, it will open another window that looks like this that I can give a lot more information about Susie or Susie can give a lot more information about herself. Um, talking about if she has any nicknames, what seasons she's raced, you can see all of this information you can fill out, what your favorite things are, recommendations you might have from where you are. Um, and then underneath of it, you can put in some kind of biography if you need, if you wanted to, crew members, hobbies, all these good things. All of this stuff is, um, information that will show up in the My Race Pass app if anybody searches for your name. So then down here at the bottom, you can fill out all of this information, any sponsors, whatever it is, fill out all of this stuff. Um, and that would be important information for people to know about you. If you also go to account up here in the top left, it will tell you that you can use a, a profile image that will go right here on your profile, My Race Pass profile. That would be a profile of like a picture of, I don't know, you or your car or whatever it is you'd like it to be. But whatever you put here is again, what's gonna show up in the app or what's gonna show up in live timing if your track does live timing through My Race Pass. You can also do a header image, you can update that. Again, you could have that be, you know, like your rig, your race car, your family, whatever. Whatever you want it to be, you can put those things in there um, and it would show up if someone were to search for your profile on my race pass. So once you've updated your profile, any part of the way that you would like to, you can, you know, close up out of it or whatever you want to do. Um, but that's something really cool that my race pass has is once you've created a, a profile, you can keep people up to date on what you're doing based on, based on what they see on your profile. You can pay uh, per, per year to be able to do other things on your profile, including adding pictures and news stories and those kind of things, which is kind of fun. If so if you've got a following of, of people or fans that follow you, you can keep them up to speed as to what you're doing. You can create a schedule so people know where they can find you um, and all sorts of stuff. So that's that part. The last thing I'd like to show you is what it looks like when you go in a second time to register for an event. So if I go down here on the right, I'm just going to go start new registration just so I can get back to the registration screen. But let's say I now am going to go in and I'm going to register for a different event or I'm going to register for, um, you know, like a different class. Let's say Susie also, instead of running Super Pro, she's also going to run Pro. So I'm going to go back into this registration down here, this 522-2024, and I'm going to register Susie. Oh, I may have to log in and log back out. Give me one second. I got to log in and log back out. All right. So again, I'm back to this registration screen. And the cool part is I'm in Susie's account and I went to the same registration I was in earlier. But now you'll notice that this name, this Susie Baloney now shows up as a competitor that has registered before. So now I can click on a different class because I've already registered for this event. But if it was a different registration, you could click on the same class, you know. Um, but I'm going to click on pro this time. And I'm going to click on Susie because now she's going to run pro also. She decided she wants to run both classes. So once I've picked the class again, and now I can pick Susie because she's the driver, I'm going to push continue. 
The cool part, this is where the coolness comes in. The cool part is because Susie's registered before, if all of the information that Susie has provided when she registered for Super Pro is correct, she can just click on that previous registration that she created and it will pre-populate into this registration for her, meaning she may not have to enter or change anything about this registration before she moves on to the next step. So again, you can click do not import and type it all in again if you'd like to, or you can click use a previous registration. And if there were more, you'd have every registration you've ever filled out and you can use whichever one you would like. So you're gonna click on that and you're gonna click continue. Here's where it gets fun. Susie's already got her information in here. Uh, you could scan it if I were you, just scan it, make sure all the information is correct. And once you get done scanning it, you're gonna push continue. And now I can pay for this. Again, you're gonna confirm everything on this page. I confirm, I agree, add to cart. And here's my screen. Now this time, I'm not going to actually pay for it because as you can see, this does have a price in here. So again, it's $50 for the registration fee, $1.90 fee for processing from my race pass. And then there's the service fees from your credit card. So my grand total would be $53.98. So if I checked out now, it would ask me for a credit card right here on the left hand side, my payment information, it asked me what it is. And again, it's got my billing and my shipping address. Um, and then I could do that, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to pay for this. Um, but notice over here, now you could add an MRP subscription, get access to all the features of the app for just $3.99 your first month. And then everything after that is $5.99. You can also pay yearly if you would like. Um, it's a different uh, price if it's yearly, obviously. But if you click I agree, obviously it says by clicking you agree to be charged this amount, it will look like my race pass when it comes through. So again, that's how you do it the second time. The second time is so much faster because you can use that previous registration uh, that you've already created. So I hope that was helpful. I know this is a really long video, but I, it is super detailed. You can stop it, you can go back, all those good things. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to support at MyRacePass.com. They are being more than helpful, um, including myself. I'm part of that team as well. So we will be more than happy to um, help you out in anything you have questions on.